ongoing fallout over a court's decision to suspend the law license of former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. In a new op-ed, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz blasted the move, suggesting it's an unconstitutional attack on free speech, writing in part, quote, the rules under which Giuliani has been suspended are so vague that they cannot possibly satisfy the standards of due process, especially where public speech is concerned and clarity is required before it is suppressed. Everyone should be concerned when any lawyer, whether one approves or disapproves of their conducts, is suspended without a hearing based on vague criteria that, cur that curtail freedom of speech. Now, the former mayor's law license was suspended by a state appeals court, which argued that he made false claims while representing former President Trump in multiple lawsuits concerning the 2020 election. Joining us now to discuss is Giuliani's son, Andrew Giuliani, who is also running to be the state of New York's next governor. Uh, Dershowitz also explains the courts have long held that a lawyer is not entitled to the full protections of the First Amendment for statements made in court. He says that the state appeals court suspended uh, your father his law license uh, egregiously. You know, talk to us a little bit about your perspective, yeah. your father's perspective, but also what happens in a world where the attorney yeah. for the president of these United States is not sacrosanct. Joe, great point. And I tell you what, it's tough to say it any better than Professor Dershowitz just said it there, but I think just to highlight something very important here, he did not get a hearing when they suspended his, right. li his license. Think about that. He did not get a hearing. That is unbelievable. That's something that we hear about in the Soviet Union, in Pravda times, in Cuba. I mean, it really is that they picked out a political opponent's ally and they went after him. That's exactly what has happened in this scenario. And the fact that they wouldn't even give him a hearing. One other thing I'd like to highlight, too. If you look at the five judges who made that ruling, five judges, all five Democrats, zero Republicans, that was his jury. That was his jury. Three appointed by Cuomo, two elected, all five Democrats. Well, quickly, just to that point, I think there's there are a few things. Number one, when you talk about uh, the raid, mm -hmm. which obviously now, subsequent <laughs> to that, we find out that a lot of the information that was taken uh, predates yeah. Uh, you know, again, this relationship that they, they're actually claimed that they're looking into, you're talking about how in the world do you be able to parse what is privileged, yeah. as in conversations or things that pertain to the president it's and absurd. not privileged. It's really absurd. But then to your point right yeah. now, how in the world are you not going to have any ability yeah. to have a conversation about saying, look, I have a responsibility to vigorously defend my client? Yeah. And, look, yeah. And it, it violates exactly what you said, what, what Pref Professor Dershowitz is saying. It violates due process. And in fact, a man like Rudy Giuliani, who's dedicated his life to the law, I mean, the greatest U.S. attorney, not just in the history of the Southern District, but in our great country, to actually suspend his law license without giving him a hearing is disgusting. And anybody who is unbiased will be able to admit that to you. Well, quickly, you got, uh, you're running for governor of the state. <laughs> uh, you had a big day yesterday. We did. Um, obviously, the straw poll there. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about your approach moving forward sure. here as you try to take your message to the voters of the state. Sure. So, look, we just released our first poll. We actually found from uh, the 2.9 million registered Republicans that we are up, up eight points so far for the Republican nomination. So, look, there, I think there was a little bit of a plan for the party to anoint another candidate. Unfortunately, the two point for them, the 2.9 million Republicans are starting to say, you know what, we like this Giuliani guy. So honestly, I'm very excited. I think this 62 county tour that we've done and completed already, we're, we're around our second statewide county tour. I think it's helping. And the truth is, we are going to continue to talk to people, mm -hmm. to businesses that have been affected so much, not just by the last 17 months in the pandemic but by the last 10 and a half years of Andrew Cuomo's reign. And I am confident that they will make them, they will make me their nominee, mm -hmm. and ultimately we will take down Andrew Cuomo on November 8th of 2022. All right, so it sounds like you are talking to the people face to face. Yes. And as you say, you've got to get through that Republican primary Yeah, my first. voice I left in Utica, by the way. It's, so that's it's how that sound, is. sounds like it. Of course, you're, you are facing uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin mm -hmm. as well. New York State Republican Party chair says that he's the presumed nominee yeah. at this point. What sets you apart from the congressman? Well, I would say, yeah, I would say, and here, here's the difference right here. So uh, the presumed nominee, they ultimately made that decision, a couple of dozen people in a back room in Albany. What we've done is we've talked to the 2.9 million registered Republicans, and more than that, the 19.5 million New Yorkers. That's the difference. 
I'm very happy being the people's candidate versus the party insider's candidate. There's a guy that I worked for for about four years who seemed to be the people's candidate rather than the party insider's candidate. What was his name? You guys might have. Oh, Donald Trump. You might have heard of him. He seemed to have success doing that. So we're starting to have early success uh, taking that route right there. What sets us apart? I think what really, really sets us apart is we are going to be able to not just coalesce this Republican Party, but we're going to be able to get more crossover votes, more independents. More, more Democrats, Emma, have come up to me over the last couple of weeks saying we are so sick and tired of what we're seeing in our state. They're sick and tired of seeing yeah. crime skyrocket and businesses leaving down to Florida. Look, I love you, Ron DeSantis, but... You're not going to have a Realtor of the Year in Andrew Giuliani here, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> All right, got to leave it at that then. Thank you. Andrew, always great to hear an update on the campaign. Thanks for coming on as always. We'll see you soon. Coming Thank up. You. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.